If we have to be completely honest, looking at the Brooklyn Nets, they truly are a disaster. And it brings up many questions in my mind, like, for Kyrie Irving next season, obviously he opted into his contract this year and he only has one year left on his deal. He'll be a free agent this up and coming off season in the NBA next year. But what will happen with him? You know, I mean, obviously the Lakers may try to acquire him as in that was already talks previously in the summer. But other than that, I don't think really any other NBA team will want to take on the amount of drama that comes with Kyrie Irving uh, don't get it twisted Kyrie Irving he's a great player when he's playing but obviously in these past few games throughout the entire NBA season really he hasn't really been playing the best and with all of the controversy and noise that he's been making even this season now it's so much and let's not forget just last season alone that he sat out a long time of the, out of the NBA season because he he refused to play and get the vaccine and you know this is during the time when the nets traded for james harden you know when they had him on the team they all had a chance to play all together but obviously health and many other issues ruined that team the year in 2021 that could have been their year really to win an nba championship and that's what everybody has said and it's still very true if if you know kevin durant obviously got hurt james harden got hurt Kyrie they all weren't really at their best and they only played really together in totality like not even 20 games when they all did play together we all know that they made history i mean they were one of the best offenses especially from a big three we've ever seen in a history i think one game they all combined for like over just about 100 points together you know that's stuff that you don't really hear about and if they all were healthy they would have definitely won that championship that year. But of course, the Bucks went on and won that championship. And coming into that next season, like I said before, Kyrie Irving want decides to sit out for COVID. And that causes many more issues for this Brooklyn Nets team. And James Harden, you know, he's over here ring chasing and stuff, trying to win an NBA championship. But in the reality, he never gets that opportunity to do it with the Brooklyn Nets. And they end up trading him to the 76ers. And he's in a bit of a better situation now on the 76ers. And of course, the Nets get Ben Simmons. Now, let's get me real. Don't get it wrong. In the beginning of the season, I was like, well, the Nets may be a better team than we think we are. I was dead wrong. And let's be real. Ben Simmons, coming into this year, he's been pretty bad. I mean, looking at it on paper, we thought that Ben Simmons would have more defense and it would allow Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant to really take control more on the offensive end of the basketball court. And Ben Simmons will definitely help out and even out things on the defensive end of the basketball court alongside his great transition play and facilitating but he has been nothing but a disappointment but that only that's not really fully goes on him because when you look at their team in general the only 3 and d type player they have is royce o'neill and they have nothing else but just shooters and guys who can't really defend well they don't really have much of nothing on their team that has really helped them compete at the highest level and that's why they're losing right now. That's why they're not one of the best teams in the NBA right now today. Primary ingredient for to win NBA championships is great depth and, and most importantly, guys who are 3 and D players who can guard the perimeter and def shoot threes. But I know right now that I may be all over the place with my explaining because, I mean, that's, that's how you can basically describe this Brooklyn Nets team. It's been nothing but a bunch of drama and chaos and many different issues and it kind of shows you one very key fundamental element that each nba team that we've seen great over the years have and that's simply leadership when nba teams have the right management they have a great stability that they can count on when you look at teams over the years like the san antonio spurs even now with the golden state warriors what have they definitely shown throughout these last decade or so you would say consistency i mean greg popovich has been a great coach but not only that but they've had a great gm they had great leadership the same with the golden state warriors with bob myers his ability is just always make the warriors a contending team and steve kerr as their head coach you haven't heard really anything about those teams firing their coaches or 
letting loose guys like that because they've always been consistent even with the players on their rosters and i look at teams like the brooklyn nets or even the lakers right now i mean for crying out loud i mean a, a model franchise in the nba right now they lack all these qualities and for the brooklyn nets it's no different i mean they had kenny atkinson who was their head coach prior to steve nash and he wasn't a bad coach i mean he helped that brooklyn Nets team before kevin durant and Kyrie were there you know help them be a, a playoff contending team with D'Angelo Russell during that time but after that once he was the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets with KD and Kyrie the fit just really wasn't right for them KD and Kyrie Irving and they decided to move on from him and get a guy like Steve Nash who was more timid and really just he wasn't really aggressive in his approach and really demanded more respect from his players you know everybody respected him as a player but as a coach i don't think he really just had all the right talent for it i mean he was a, a first time coach as well but he got so many many chances but i don't put the blame all on him because i think a lot of it has to do with the leadership they did transform this entire brooklyn Nets team don't get me wrong with limited assets that they did have they still transformed this team into you know a team with kevin durant and carry on it obviously but they did not really handle it the great way. I mean, now, you know, they have an interim coach in, but Steve Nash was fired. Another head coach for the Brooklyn Nets team, gone, just like that. And looking at the direction that they're going now, you know, with the roster that they do have currently, it's not really, it's not really looking good for the Brooklyn Nets right now. Kyrie Irving, of course, with all the drama remarks that he's made recently, he's out indefinitely. And that brings us a big question in my mind that I really thought, like, you know, one thought that came in my head was, would he possibly retire? I mean, you know, Kyrie Irving, he has all the money in the world now, let's be real. He doesn't, but he doesn't have, you know, his Nike thing anymore, or just, he lost so many opportunities. It's like, what's really, what's the point now, you know, for him to really continue on in that way? I mean, he won an NBA championship, but... I kind of just thought to myself, would he possibly retire? I doubt it, but if he did, you know, I wouldn't really necessarily be surprised. And you know, for Kevin Durant, I haven't really discussed Kevin Durant pretty much at all in this entire video. We know that he demanded a trade in the offseason prior as well, and he wanted out of the situation in Brooklyn because of all the drama and the chaos that was t happening during that time in the offseason, especially. And let's be real i think that kevin durant sh should still this consider demanding another trade i think that the nets should have just traded him during the offseason instead of trying to run this thing back because i just think that just caused more issues for them coming into this nba season now like when you look at their team now and if they traded kevin durant they could have probably got way more assets and just start a rebuilding process for their future but no they decided to just hold on to him and hold on to hope for this team because they don't really have no draft picks they don't really have anything but trading a guy like kevin durant and seeing what you can get for him i think they could get many assets but he is getting older and he is not going to be the same level of player in these next few years but regardless of that still i think that that was a decision they should have made by Kev trading away kevin durant as well but these guys went from being possibly seen as one of the best duos in the league to then being arguably the greatest big three ever assembled in NBA history to now being a disappointment. I mean, Ben Simmons, let's be real. I won't be surprised if he's traded if the play continues to not be well. But none of that all is fully his fault because the roster isn't properly constructed great either. But I wouldn't be surprised still if he, he may be traded or he, Kevin Durant may be traded in the future. I mean, it's a lot of things that's going downhill right now in the NBA and the Brooklyn Nets are one of them. Really, don't even get me started on this MA Udoka situation. Now, there are reports that obviously that the women in the, in the staff and the office of the Brooklyn Nets are telling them to really question this decision about hiring him as their head coach off of the previous news and things and allegations that we've obviously have on him now. I mean, if they do hire him, he was actually part of this Brooklyn Nets team a while ago, a long time ago, as their defensive coordinator when they had, well, I would say a long time ago, but when, you know, Harden and all those guys were on the team. But other than that, you know, I just, I don't know. You know, he may or may not be the head coach of this team either. 
so and if he does hopefully the guys actually buy into the system but with all of the issues that are happening right now i seriously doubt it you know you have you have really an unbalanced star in Kyrie Irving and a guy in Kevin Durant that who's who's there who's been consistent but he doesn't have all the talent in the world to just really compete when your second guy in Kyrie isn't really doing his part and that's really been the whole case Kevin Durant has been hurt and he's gotten hurt many times now and he's pretty injury prone now but regardless of that when he's playing he's one of the best players in the league but without Kyrie Irving and him being consistent and playing and all the situations from the COVID situation to now being suspended and all the drama that he's been bringing in, he won't be, hey, these guys are never going to play again with each other. I, I can easily just see that, but hey, what do I know? Really, I know I'm kind of rambling now, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. It was a brief video, and I just hope that you know the Brooklyn Nets can really just figure this out you know and it's gonna be tough you know but this this is an example a perfect example as I said earlier of what leadership means to a franchise if you have great leadership great people in your front office knowing what they're doing things are gonna work out really well but if you don't then you get situations like this where it's nothing but just drama but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos each and every single week. Have a great day. P peace.